as you kind of hinted to, you've made this really useful distinction between this unitive experience where there's you know, the subject and, and the objects of the world, and then there's a kind of a combining of the two, a kind of melting into each other. And then there's the, the DMT state, which kind of lends itself more often to this interactive relational experience, as you've called it, um, where your sense of self is very much intact and there's all this content and um, that you're interacting with. Um, so yeah, maybe you could give us a bit of an outline of, of what a DMT experience might be like. Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, I guess I should describe um, you know, the setting in which uh, volunteers receive DMT. Uh, it was a hospital room, you know, pretty stark on a clinical research unit, um, which also was you know, doing a lot of experimental cancer chemotherapy research. You know, so it was a you know pretty you know, serious place. Um, you know, volunteers were normal volunteers. We screened them for any bent, you know, uh, you know, for any you know, psychological or any medical problems. <clears throat> uh, you know, they were all experienced with uh, you know psychedelics. Only a small number of them had used DMT before. You know, this was the late '80s, early '90s, uh, and it was still a pretty unknown drug. Um, you know, that was, you know, changing with, you know, Terrence McKenna's work, but still it was, you know, relatively obscure compared to now. Um, and, uh, as I was, you know, saying early on, uh, it was just a clinical psychopharmacology study. Um, and we told volunteers, uh, you know, not that much. Uh, it's, uh, I described it as, you know, fast onset, short duration, fast offset, um, and you may you know, feel as if you've left your body. And as a result, you might be afraid that you've died, but don't worry, uh, you know, nobody's died and we have a, uh, you know, code team on call at all times. You know, so that kind of, uh, was the, you know, bare bones, uh, you know, preparation. I mean, it wasn't like, well, there's this thing called a mystical experience that dates back to the Vedas. And, uh, yeah, it's like, okay, you know, this is, you know, DMT, it's very strange, it's very fast, uh, you know, don't be afraid, you know, you know, be calm, you know, before I inject the drug, uh, and just, you know, keep your wits about you, uh, and, you know, observe and just, you know, do your thing in there, and then come back and describe it to us, you know, so that's, you know, you know, that was the, you know, set and setting, uh, you know, most of the volunteers in the first, you know, set of studies were friends, you know, so they knew me, I knew them, we trusted each other. Um, yeah, and, you know, they had been, you know, st standing um, in line for, you know, two years to participate in the study, you know, so during that time, you know, we you know, kind of worked out an agreement, like you'll be going into this state and, uh, you know, it's important to, you know, remember as much as you can and, you know, we'll talk about it afterwards. Um, yeah, you know, so I, you know, so they had, you know, two IVs in place, uh, you know, one in each arm, um, uh, uh, you know, rectal, uh, you know, thermistor, like a skinny wire, you know, to, you know, measure temperature and a blood pressure cuff. Uh, yeah, you know, so they couldn't really move. Uh, I mean, you know, they were strapped in. Uh, and I'm um, at first, you know, when I would describe the you know, the setting to them, you know, when they would, you know, come in, you know, to my office and we'd start you know, talking about the study like a you know, month or two uh, in advance. Um, you know, I would, you know, describe the environment in the hospital. And um, at first they would be kind of leery. Uh, it was a fraught description, uh, you know, but after they you know, thought about it and especially at the time of the study itself, you know, they were glad uh, that they couldn't move because it helped them just, uh, you know, give up resistance. Uh, they just were going to surrender to the drug effect. You know, they weren't going to fight it. They weren't going to move around. They weren't going to, you know, try and get up and start dancing or something. They were going in deep. Uh, yeah, you know, so, uh, yeah, I would, you know, walk upstairs, you know, from the you know pharmacy in the basement with a you know, little, you know, syringe of you know, frozen DMT in my shirt pocket and would be, you know, thawing out as I'd be running up the stairs. Um, yeah, you know, so, 
uh, you know, there is, you know, me on one side and, you know, the nurse on the other side of the bed, um, you, you know, they'd be, you know, laying flat, uh, you know, with eye shades, you know, because early on it was just, you know, too distracting if you weren't wearing eye shades, you know, because of the room breaking up visually and, you know, the rush. I mean, you really wanted to, you know, have your wits about you as the effects began. And if you're, you know, looking around disoriented, you know, by the onset of the visions, it's, you know, difficult to focus. Um, you know, so, you know, I would ask them, you know, to take a breath, to relax, you know, to tell me when they're ready, you know, tell me when you're ready. Um, you know, so people would, you know, close their eyes and, you know, take some, some, you know, breaths and you know, calm themselves. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, they say, okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'd, you know, stick the you know, syringe, uh, you know, through the diaphragm. And uh, yeah, I would um, you know begin infusing it over the space of you know thirty seconds. I would say I've, I've started now, halfway through. Okay, I'm done. You know, pulling out you know the drug syringe. Okay, I'm injecting you know saline now. You know to clear the line. Yeah, and uh, over the next you know fifteen seconds. Um, you know, so you know we gave a number of um, of different doses: uh, placebo, small, a couple of medium, and one large. You know, so I'm describing the large effects, uh, the large dose effects. Um, you would start to, you know, uh, you would start to, you know, feel the rush um, at about, like, I'm um, after just a couple of heartbeats. Uh, there would be an inner you know, sensation of anxiety and acceleration, you know, pressure, inner pressure. Um, and you, it was very important to stay, you know, calm, you know, during that you know, 15, 30 second rush. Uh, you know, because it was quite powerful. Um, you, you, um, you know, with eyes closed, uh, you know, there would be the appearance of, you know, rapidly, you know, moving, you know, morphing, kaleidoscopic, you know, heavily you know, pixelated uh, you know, visual imagery. Um, uh, um, you know, frequently, you know, not always, but, uh, you know, fairly often there was a, a you know, buildup of a high pitched uh, you know, sound, um, you know, so the rush and the you know, sound would, uh, you know, kind of, you know, climax at about, you know, 30 seconds, you know, 60 seconds, and uh, you would be, you know, catapulted or, you know, find yourself or propelled into this, uh, this world of light, um, you know, space full of light, uh, you know, black space, you know, full of light. Um, and um, it was quiet. Uh, you, you know, it started off with that, uh, you know, high pitched, you know, crescendoing, you know, sound. But once you were there, uh, it was utterly, you know, silent. You couldn't hear anything. Well, you were functionally deaf. Uh, you, you know, there'd be stuff going out outside in the hall, and you know, volunteers would you know, just you know, be lying there completely oblivious. The first couple of you know blood uh, you know pressure you know checks with that automated cuff, which is which exerts you know quite the grip. Uh, you, you know people were completely unaware of the two minute reading and usually unaware of the five minute reading. You know so you know they were you know moribund uh, at least you know to the uh, you know to the eye. Um, you know so these you know visual you know, visual images, you know, could coalesce in, into, you know, definable, you know, discernible, uh, you know, figures, uh, insects, reptiles, plants, uh, statuettes, or, you know, robotic things, uh, birds, uh, any, you know, number uh, of, you know, discrete objects. Um, and you know, you know, we ended up, you know, calling, uh, you know, those things the beings, you know. But even if you know there weren't, you know, beings, there was still this, you know, sense of uh, of intelligence and of power in that state, even if it, you know, may not be, you know, localized to a specific, you know, thing that you could see. Um, you know, so there would be interactions between the beings and you, between the state and you. Um, you know, the feelings were were full you know whether you know to call them blissful or ecstatic it would be a, a little difficult you know you know to characterize them it was you know more of 
uh, you know, fullness of the you know, peak effect like that, uh, you know, where you're you know, hanging out in that space at maximal intensity might be about five minutes, seven minutes at the most, maybe 10 minutes. Um, yeah, but still it's a pretty you know, busy time. And most volunteers were amazed. It was only 10 minutes. They would, you know, they you know, felt it was half hour, hour, three hours, you know, and, uh, and um, you know, a much longer period of time, you know, than actually elapsed. Uh, so they'd start coming down around 20 minutes after the injection, uh, they'd be able to start, you know, moving around, uh, you know, flexing their hands, extending their fingers. Um, yeah, you know, feeling themselves kind of return back into their bodies. Yeah, and at the half hour point, almost everybody, you know, was straight, was, you know, sober, uh, you know, talking uh, within another, you know, 10 minutes or so, uh, you know, they'd be drinking tea, you know, filling out rating scales. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> you know, the time course corresponded, you know, to the levels of DMT in blood. Uh, which were you know, peak um, at two minutes and at five minutes, and then uh, you know began to precipitously you know, drop after that, and were un and and were you know basically you know non detectable at uh, the thirty minute point. You know, people would you know would would start you know feeling functional again, and uh, start describing you know their experiences. We'd spend another half hour, maybe an hour, uh, you know talking about what happened, and I would be you know taking notes and transcribe them later.